Folks, welcome back. We come back to the Bible study we started last time entitled Amer uh, Amazing Biblical Facts, Giants, and Pyramids. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's, long, that's too long title already. But I want to get into again on the teaching that I am finding fascinating to study. And I've said this many times, that if you don't know history, you do not understand scriptures. Now, I'm dead serious, folks. I don't just mean dates and facts. I mean the cultures and what happened during those dates. When I was in school, history bored me dead. Mm -hmm. You know, memorizing dates and facts meant nothing to me. I didn't care what the English Armada did. Mm -hmm. You know, that was hundreds of years ago. Why should I care? But when you look at it from his story, God's hand through time, it comes alive. But they don't teach that school, do they? They don't tell you this no, is... they teach you dates. The dates. They don't teach you this is God's hand. Look at God's hand working through time. That's against the law, say that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know where Tiger Sally sends uh, <clears throat> students to study uh, geography and stuff? CIA.gov. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. They get told them to go to CIA.gov to get information on, on countries, you know, like in Central America and all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a reliable source. Anyway, <laughs> the study, and I, I, I do take time. I love the study. I wish I, had, I wish I had a bigger brain to absorb more of this. Uh, I, <laughs> I knew somebody was going to say something. <laughs> See, anyway, I always got a heat man corner somewhere. Usually it's a trade yeah. show. What happened, Bill? But anyway, <laughs> oh, so I, just to give you just a couple of instances while he study history. <laughs> My brother Dick just gave me a book here a month or so ago uh, about that thick. The title of it is History from Chariots to Flintlocks. Wow. And yeah. I've, been I've been studying some of warfare from the beginning of history that record warfare. And I learned the Romans were one of the mighty armies that existed. Eventually, they were like America. They outstretched themselves. Mm -hmm. They got too thin. They ran out of money. Ran out. Mm -hmm. they, had to start, they had to start hiring mercenaries to fight the wars because they ran out of funds to fund their own soldiers. So, so this is what's happening in America today. By the way, I can say this again. Our government is based on the Roman government. That's where it comes from. It I'm dead serious. It is. But anyway, the Roman uh, military, the centurions, whatever, at each day at the end of the march, they used to put up a camp in tents and set guards out. They actually built a fort every day, a new fort. Built the walls up like 20-some feet high, put watchtower around them, and they could not lay down the weapons so that wall was finished. All these things, you watch history and you see the progression of mankind and, and there were some geniuses in battle, no doubt about it. But you read in the Bible about the, the destruction of, of Jerusalem in AD 70, by Titus. It's in the Bible. And the Bible is, is a phenomenal textbook of facts and truths, but you have to go a little deeper sometimes if you want to see what it really is saying behind the scenes, so to speak. As I mentioned a few years ago about uh, Einstein and E equals MC squared. I know that. I read the textbook. I knew it was true. Hmm. Don't know what the heck it means, but I read it. It's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could go out and pass tests. They asked me and say, yep, that's what it means. That's what it is. What, how does it work? I don't know. Didn't know I had to know that. I just have no facts. Uh -huh. It's good to know the facts. It's also good to know why it works that way. When the Romans were, to, were going to sack Jerusalem, as Christ prophesied, the Christians left Jerusalem. Y'all, that's Bible, by the way. They fled. Christ says coming. They left Jerusalem. They had it, the church would maybe stop right there, a lot of them anyway. Mm -hmm. They fled Jerusalem. The ones that stayed behind were called the Zealots. Mm -hmm. There were three different groups of Zealots. And while they were waiting to be attacked, as Rome built uh, walls up to attack Jerusalem from higher, they had built huge walls to get above them to attack inside the city. While they were waiting to be attacked, they were fighting among themselves. Sound like somebody we know this today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. As we're waiting to be attacked, what's Americans doing? What's that right now in, in Ferguson, Missouri? Civil unrest. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. The enemy's tactics never change, but mm -hmm. we're too dumb to learn from them. But anyway, they fought, they fought among themselves and, and killing some people inside the city while they were waiting to be attacked by the Romans. Now, the three groups of zealots, and one of them was led by John, and this is the wrong pronunciation, of Calibus, by John of Calibus, was a whole zealot group that called themselves followers of God who all dressed like women. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't either. They hid under skirts. Yeah, they did. They all dressed like women, wore the braided hair, makeup, just like women did, but they were following God and they were going to set Jerusalem free from tyranny. I wonder if that fits America today. We have homosexuals running the country. We have perverts all around us, murdering babies, and we're going to set America free? Crossdressers on top of it. And we're about to be, about to be attacked, literally? 
Hmm? Is there a scenario here? Yes, there is. Now the Bible says Jerusalem was attacked. That's a good thing to know. But when you know the history behind it, you can see the scenario fitting in today's society and you can tell where we are in time. Mm -hmm. Bible, history, current events. Boom! That's where we are. Yep. Is that interesting? The fall of America, Rome. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now if I bore you all, let me know. I hope this ain't boring to you. Mm -hmm. oh. But it opened my eyes up and builds my faith to see that my God is who He says He is. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you something that I never really thought about until some time back. In Matthew chapter uh, 22, people want to tell you that the angels are sexist. The Bible doesn't say that. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say that. Uh, and, and I don't have time to do all this to prove it to you, but the, the, the Nephilim, the fallen ones, the word Nephilim means fallen ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, did breed with the women on earth. We're going to come up more later on. I want to show what Christ said about, about angels in Matthew 22 in verse 30. When the resurrection they neither marry nor given in marriage but as the angels of God in heaven. The angels did not marry. Mm -hmm. But I have a question to ask you. Now listen, this, now please think with me. Do people have to be married to, for when they get pregnant? No. no. Hello. <laughs> so marriage isn't necessary to have sex, is it? No. It's supposed to be a qualification, a godly one, but it's not necessary. So people read that and say, oh, well, they, you know, they know they're not sexist. No, they're not sexist. Matter of fact, I can show you in the Bible where there are women angels. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. Yes. Anyway, so anyway, I'm seeing some things here that I'm learning, that I love studying, and it's really getting me excited to see that what our God's told us happened in the past is going to happen again, and it is happening. Mm -hmm. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall be, so the, shall be in the turn of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. We are seeing this happen. We're seeing through the study of scriptures that the Nephilim, the fallen ones, that Josh brought in sexual perversion, even uh, cannibalism. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it. Now in our time again. Interesting, isn't it? I started last week just by mentioning one giant in the Bible we know about Goliath. Goliath was a small one. He was a short one, actually. <laughs> Goliath was short. He was only nine foot nine. Yeah, he nine foot six. He wasn't all that big. I still wouldn't want to mess with no, him. No, neither, but he wasn't all that big. Seriously, I'm dead serious compared mm -hmm. to the giants. Go with me if you would to second, the first Chronicles chapter 20. How many of y'all know that Goliath had brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yes. But he was a Roman leader, wasn't he? He, he was just about, I would say. I don't, they don't give the statutes the rest of them, but it gives you some names of them. Now, th and I want you, now this is amazing. I've read it before, folks, but never to study it. Reading and studying are two different things. Yeah. Bible says study, is, study can be a wearing of the mind. Now, i got to tell you what. How many ever eat a good meal to the point you just couldn't hold one more bite? <laughs> yeah. You're almost sick. You ever done that? Mm -hmm. The same way studying sometimes. You put everything in your can, you can't say, all right, that's enough right now. I've got to digest this. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Because yeah. anything beyond that, you're going to fold up. Yeah. yeah. So back off and digest. I study for sometimes hours, sometimes high six hours at a time without hardly moving. And I have to stop because that's all I can hold, Lord. He knows that. So I back away, digest, and make it more. Mm -hmm. And this is phenomenal. When I say that this is the scripture, I want to show you a few things in the Bible before we move on from here to, to, to some other giants in the Bible and history. First Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was again, there was war again with the Philistines, and Elaham, the son of Jar, slew Lamni, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. Yet again there was a war at Gath. There was a man of the great stature whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, four and twenty, six in each hand and six in each foot. And he also was a son of, of the giant. Now, I'm, that's the, remember, remember the number of toes mm -hmm. and fingers because it's, it's a trait seemed like the giants had, for, have had. I had a friend in college that had six fingers. Six toes? And six mm -hmm. toes. I know a guy also. But he, when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shema, David's brother, slew him. Uh, there were, these were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So obviously in David's time, after the flood, there were giants. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth so mm -hmm. far? Mm -hmm.
They didn't go away after the flood. This polluted seed of the giants is why God destroyed the people on the earth and all flesh on the earth. All flesh can become polluted through the seed of the fallen Nephilim. Except right. for Except for eight. Right. right. Now let this sink in a minute. <clears throat> this is phenomenal. Satan tried to destroy the seed of Christ. If he could pollute all the seed in the world, Christ would have been born. Right. Now, isn't this amazing? Mm -hmm. Do we serve a mighty God or what? Mm. Satan come this close to destroying the plan of salvation. And our God knew that. Yeah. I bet that ticked him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured it did. <coughs> now, let's go to 2 <coughs> Samuel. 2 Samuel. Wow, we get stuck here. One page. 2 Samuel. Chapter 21. I love studying the Bible. I love studying this. This gets me so excited to have a hard time sitting still and, and, and studying. <laughs> How many of you ever had a real good meal? You just almost feel like this bouncing foot because it tastes good. Mm -hmm. yeah, same thing here, okay? It just tastes good. You want to just shake all over. I don't get bored. Did you ever see Mexican okay. jumping beans? <laughs> Mexican, but yeah, 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 Mexican real ones beans? actually. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, my uncles had them, and it was kind of neat to see those beans just jumping around. Jump all the yeah, right. We knew that. <laughs> <laughs> in chapter twenty-one, a, a second Samuel. Get to myself on the first Samuel. Let's look at verse sixteen. And Ish be bedab, Ish be bedab, which was of the sons of the giant. The weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, and being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. They actually thought he, they, he killed David in battle. They thought David was dead. It's a true story. Yeah. They thought he was dead. But Abisha, the son of Zerah, succored him, and smote the Philistine and killed him. He saved David, and then killed the Philistine. Mm -hmm. Then the men of David swore at him, saying, Thou shalt no more go out with us to battle. Thou shalt quench, thou shalt quench not this the light of Israel. In other words, they said, now on David, we, you don't go to war. Mm -hmm. We go for you. We don't want to kill our leader. I'm going to kill our leader. You see that story there? A giant almost killed David. So what, was there giants in David's lifetime again? Yes. You're hard to get rid of. Oh, they seem to be that way. Now, stay in the same, the same uh, book. Drop down. And I'm going to repeat this because it's important to repeat it again. In chapter, in verse uh, 20. And there was yet a battle in Gath where it was a man of great stature and had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shema, the giant brother David, slew him. These four were born to the giant of Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So Goliath had brothers. Right. That con continue to defy Israel. I think it was more they didn't do too well, did they? And that's not so good. Now those two that was the son of David's brother, which is David's nephew, mm -hmm. killed the giant. See, these details we read, or we may look at, we don't really think about. Now Deuteronomy chapter 3. This gets better and better. Better and better. <laughs> We have another giant here who lived in the promised land who the Israelites had to conquer and they went in. Chapter 3, verse 11. Mm. For only Og, king of Basham, remained of the remnant of giants. The last one left here. Behold, the bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Ramoth of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth thereof, after the cubit of a man. A cubit of a man can be either be 18 inches, normal cubit, or 22 inches, they call royal cubit. So his bedstead was at least 13 and a half foot long and six and a half foot wide. That's a big dude. Make life look short. Yeah. His shed will weigh 500 pounds. <laughs> you got that right. So think about this. This isn't, this isn't being 20,000 years ago. This what size shoe would that guy wear? Oh, I don't know. We're going to find out a little bit later on some other studies here. So many people speak they found were 22, 22 inches long. I just take to be the one in the empty chamber party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Let's go to the book of Numbers. Book of Numbers. 
Oh, as you say this, it gets, I don't know, it just it gets exciting to me. Numbers chapter 13. Okay. <laughs> Numbers chapter 13. This is when the, the story of when the spies went into the promised land. Now I've read this many times and I thought, recall what they said. This world is read the first verse, in verse 33. And there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come of, of, which come of the giants, and we were in their own sights as grasshoppers, and so we, we so we were their sight. They were scared to death. Ten of the twelve were scared to death. Mm-hmm. Well, they were in their sight as grasshoppers. Now, and they said a pot of grapes that took two men to carry. It's in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Now, when I read that before, I, I'd read it and skim over and think, well, there was, in my mind, I could see them being greatly outnumbered, perhaps. I never really dominated these people were actual giants. Yeah. Okay? I'll read to you this book I found more than interesting on the history of, of the scriptures, the fallen angels and, and giants come after that, and, the te- and technology that they brought forth. I'm going to tell you things after a while that you're going to search out for yourself. I'm not going to go into details. I want time to. I'm going to tell you where to find it. Go look at it. But in this book, let's see if I can find the page real quick. The name of the book? It's this, As the Days of Noah Were. Yep. Oh as the Days of Noah Were. I ordered it the other day, well, the other day, a while back. But these are some of the names given to the tribes of different giants. And, and, and back in the scripture times, names had meanings. Yeah. Emon, Emon was the name of one of the tribes of giants. That was means the fearful ones. Rephium, 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 the dead ones. The dead ones. Anakim, the long neck ones. Zumzumman, people whose speech sounds like buzzing. That's what the actual meaning of the words were. These were some weird creatures. Okay? And I'm not going to go through all these. I don't have time. Uh, but I do want to share with you. I'll get more detail on this a bit later on. Even the Lakota Indians yeah. knew about giants. Yeah. They could carry mm. a buffalo over the shoulder. That's true. Mm. So anyway... Let's get now the Ecclesiastes. I'm going to go, go some actual facts. Ecclesiastes <laughs> chapter 1. I read this many times too, and I didn't understand it to the point I could have. The Bible says it, so we know it's true. But what could it really mean? Chapter 1, look at verse 9. The thing that, has, that hath been, past tense, it is that which shall be, future tense. What's that mean? As it was, it so shall happen. it be. <laughs> and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. <laughs> really? Yes. Let that sink in. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which shall be for us. Mm-hmm. Now, you mean they knew about flying uh, objects? Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you pictures of them from Egypt. Literally flying objects. They, I'm pictures of them. Yes. <clears throat> but I want to share with you some things, though, that I think may find interesting. I'll share with you out this book, too, another page of history, uh, some history. This is the punishment of the Nephilim. I've got to read part of this to you, folks. I cannot get into it in detail in the book until I read this to you. I don't want to, if you all get in a hurry, let me know. But I don't want to see this. The Nephilim were a violent race and tells their deeds can be found all over the world. Whatever the Nephilim did led to the downfall of human morality and angered God to the point that he entered, wanted to destroy the world with, with the flood. Not only is the record recorded in the Bible, but there is at least one other story from the other side of the world that confirms that the flood was sent to destroy the giants. This is a tribe of North, a tribe of North American Indians believes that the first human beings on the earth were the race of gigantic Indians, so large that even the mighty buffalo was dwarfed by their size. 
Such a giant Indian could lift a full-grown buffalo bull from the ground and throw it over his shoulder, carrying it back to his encampment effortlessly. A yearling to him was so small, he would simply hang it from his belt as a hunter today might do with a rabbit. Now, this is actual history. These giant forebears had no fear of any superior power, had no notion of life after death, and did not believe in Tarawa, that the all-powerful all one who watches over the destiny of man. So the giants did as they pleased with no regard for consequences. Finally, when the deeds they perpetrated had reached unacceptable portions, <coughs> Tarawa resolved to punish the big men. He caused the waters of the rivers, like lakes and floods, to rise up until they were level with the land. The ground became soft, and heavy giants sank down into the mud and were drowned. Even today, Master's bones are still found in remote areas of North America. We're going to show that in a minute. According to the Bible, the first wave of Nephilim perished in the flood, but, was, but what happened to their spirits? They were half <coughs> angel and half human. Angels do not die, as far as we know, but humans do. Those that are, were part celestial and part terrestrial had a problem, to say the least. According to the book of Enoch, Noah prophesies concerning this exact situation. I want, I want to clarify something here. Enoch is not a scriptural book, but it's a fantastic history book. I've got it. Yeah, the book of yeah. I got all the so-called all the other books of the Bible. If you, unless you study these, you will not. Under, I, I can show you in in Second Maccabees twelve or twenty four, where where the Catholics got the idea of Hades. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not Hades, but uh, purgatory. 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 Yeah, it's not biblical. But that's I found with where they got. Anyway, this is Enoch chapter fifteen eight through twelve. And now the giants who are who are produced from the spirits of the in flesh to be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the holy watchers. Uh, that's what they call the fallen angels. It is their beginning and prime one origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. And they're still here. They're still here. Yes. As for the spirits of heaven, in, in heaven shall be their dwelling. As for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. That, by the way, that was your punishment kicked out and heard loud back in heaven. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and, because, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the, and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. Yeah. Wow. This passage in the book of Enoch is, is interesting because it puts perspective on something Moses says in the book of De Deuteronomy. Worship of spiritual beings was not just confined to those they could interact with, but also the spirits they were perceived as being very powerful, even though they could not take on a physical uh, form of their own. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 while you're there. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'll tell you what, I'll let you all look it up. If you would, look it up for a second on that, please, Joe. Do you want to read it? Which verse? Deuteronomy chapter 32. John, Birth, uh, no, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Okay. And I want you to look this Bible, folks. Again, a true statement in the scriptures, but you gotta look behind it to find the whole the reason why it's there. And when you do find it, man, it just absolutely blows your mind how, what our God's told us mm -hmm. in a few words. Deuteronomy chapter thirty two, verse seventeen. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God. To gods, being a little G, whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly, nearly up, newly up, newly up, newly up, whom your fathers feared not. I mean, <coughs> new gods literally found devils to worship. Devils to worship. It's the same thing happening today. It is. This is around the time the Hebrews were in the wilderness, killing off tribes so they could possess the promised land. Moses said that they are sacrificing the devils; they're not to God. The word "devil" is is Hebrew is "seir," which we translate the English word. As devils, satyrs, or fauns, F A U N S. Those familiar, those familiar with Greek mythology will immediately recognize satyrs as human goat hybrids. Mm -hmm. The most famous of all satyrs being the Greek god Pan, where we get the word pandemonium. Yeah. Moses states that these gods were now were, were new and previous generations did not fear them. Notice how Moses uses the words devils and gods interchangeably to refer to beings that the Israelites were, were worshiping. Mm -hmm. According to the both Deuteronomy and the book of Enoch, there were new spirits on the earth that had not previously been there before. Now, how could that be? They were just, they were just born yeah, it happened of the fallen angels and women. They were half human, half spirit. 
According to both the Old and New Testaments, we know that demons are evil spirits and roam the earth, causing problems for mankind. According to Isaiah 26, 14, part of their punishment includes being left out of the resurrection of the dead. The following three, I'm not going to read all that to you, but it goes another reference from other, uh, we'll say, uh, like the Dewey Bible, different things, reference of the, the angels. Mm-hmm. Notice in the Latin word, gigantes, means earthborn. Giants, the word is, is Latin, means earthborn. So these giants were literally earthborn. A period, which, which is the same exact word for Greeks use as, as it, and it's where we get the word giant. In the Dewey Ring Bible, the word giants is there. Finally, in the Young's literal translation, the word is refium, shades, ghosts, the dead ones, which is, as we learn to see later, are one of the tribes of the ne- of Nephilim. The King James Version of the Bible, it goes on, it says, goes on, it's clear, but you got to dig a little deeper. Uh, so, we see that the, the, the Bible talks about giants. It talks about fallen angels, if you will, that become on this earth and live on the earth. They cannot go back into heaven, and many of them are now in chains reserved to day of punishment. Mm-hmm. Now this, and, that, and why would God chain them? Now think a minute. Why did he destroy the earth the first time? Because of the evil that was created by the Nephilims. And why would he chain them now? If he did, because, what would happen? Because they don't want, want the chaos to happen yeah. again. That's right. They will be loosed. If he hadn't chained them, Nick, they'd understand they would have done it again it's already. So this is when it all comes together. Mm-hmm. Earl's like just A, B, C, D, F, G. Let me show you this some actual skeleton facts, okay? And I've got lots of them. I can't through them all at one time, but I only through some of them. In Tennessee in 1821, they found uh, an ancient fortification. The average skeleton was seven foot tall. Average. In, in, in 1800s, near Rutland, around New York, uh, they found another uh, uh, a sign of, of, of the giants. In Ohio, in Ashton County, they found a nine foot eight inch skeleton. And in Bruceville, Indiana, they found another one about the same height. Now, these are recent discoveries, 1800s. Those are basketball players. Exactly. <laughs> Ten skeletons of both sexes of gigantic, gigantic, gigantic size were found in Mound in Warren, Minnesota, in 1983. A skeleton of seven foot six inches long was found in a massive stone structure that was likened to a temple chamber within a mound in Kanawha County, West Virginia, 1884. At, as large, at, at a large mound near Chester, Chester, Pennsylvania, contained a vault in which was found a skeleton measuring seven foot two inches. In 1885, miners in, in, in the Yosemite Valley found a woman measuring six foot eight inches. Now that was an Amazon. You might have to slow down your reading a little bit. I know you're not okay. in a hurry. But. Yeah, in 1885, the, the, they found mummified remains of a woman in Yosemite, Yosemite Valley, six foot eight inches tall. I would call her ma'am. In Minnesota, <laughs> 1888, they found the remains of seven skeletons seven to eight feet tall. In Lovelock, Nevada, in 1931, the first of the two skeletons they found, eight and a half feet tall, and appeared to be wrapped in, in a gum-covered fabric, to pay attention, similar to the Egyptian manner. Hmm. Oh, mummified. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. The second skeleton was almost ten feet long. Boy, did I get the short end of the stick. Yes, you did. <laughs> in Australia, there was a group of people found in Australia called <clears throat> Megatropolis. <clears throat> they estimate they, they between 7 <clears throat> to 12 feet tall. Life is short, pick something, wasn't he? Four jaw fragments and thousands of teeth have been found in China of G- Giganotopixius, Blackie. Uh, they, were, they were around 10 feet and as long as 12 feet, tall 12 feet, and weighed 1,200 pounds. Oh, my God. He, he could have been heavy, heavy box of the world, couldn't he? Yeah. And in, uh, in Rex, uh, uh, Bathurst, Australia, they found teeth. The molar teeth measuring two and a half inches in length, two inches wide, and uh, one and a half inches across the, across the crown. Yep. That's a big tooth. Hey, boy, that that took a good dinner. Yeah, filling would, would cost a couple oh, thousand dollars. Yeah, at least. Yeah. <laughs> what about wisdom teeth? Right, in uh, I did some of these already, but in 1833, soldiers digging at, at Lampock Rancho, California, discovered a bell skeleton 12 feet tall. The skeleton was surrounded by cage shells, uh, stone axes, and uh, other artifacts. The skeleton had, tr- had double rows of upper and lower teeth. What? Unfortunately, this body was, sec- was secretly buried because the local Indians became upset about the remains. Hmm. A nine-foot, eight-inch skeleton was ex- excavated from a mound near Brewersville, Indiana, in 1879. 
1932, Ellis Wright found human tracks in the Jimson Rock at White Sand, New Mexico. The discovery was later tracked back up by Fred Arthur, supervisor of the Lincoln National Park, and others who reported that each footprint was 22 inches long from 8 to 10 inches wide. Mm. That's a big foot. <laughs> they were certain the prints were human in origin due to the outline of the perfect prints coupled with the really appearance instep. During World War II, Arthur Ivan T. Anderson tells of how his crew was bulldozing through sedimentary rock when they stumbled upon what appeared to be a graveyard. Mm. It, it, and it were cr crania that measured from 22 to 24 inches from the base to the crown, nearly three times as large as an adult human skull. Well, when I was in uh, Sun Valley at the, uh, <coughs> at the Indian School, I met Fred, and Fred has written books, and he's actually seen the human footprints with dinosaur prints in the same we'll get in the same, yeah, same strata strata and uh you know the archaeologists came in there with pickaxes and everything and destroyed them because they, they can't have they, they can't <coughs> they can't have that evidence out there just like not <coughs> yeah. but he has pictures of it he, he gave me pictures had the creatures to whom these skulls belong been properly proportioned then dally would have been at least 12 foot tall or taller and 19 by the way i didn't even bring in some of the extreme ones but in the, in the Rhone, not Ryan, Rhone River, they found skeletons 30 foot tall. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Wow. In 1947, a local newspaper reported the discovery of nine foot tall skeletons by amateur archaeologists working in Death Valley. The archaeologists involved also claimed to have found what appeared to be bones of tigers and dinosaurs with human remains. Mm -hmm. The Catalina Islands of California are the home of dwarf mammoth bones that were once roasted in ancient fire pits. Think about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. These were roasted and eaten by human-like creatures who were giants with double rows of teeth. Oh, well, I'd be in trouble. Well, oh. you know, they recently they fired a man who was a professor for one of the UC uh, uh, universities in California because um, the, he was at a dig, I, forget, I think it was Montana, and they found uh, triceratops, you know, the things that have the big horn center, you know. You're the head of me here. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my research. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's true. Yeah. But you get fired if you tell the truth. Well, they disappeared, by the way. This, the remains have disappeared. Yeah, of course. <laughs> now, this is this happened in Iowa. Now, and this is a little bit lengthy. I'll take my time reading because I think it'll find it interesting. October was a month of some excitement in scientific circles as seven strange and genetic <clears throat> mummies were discovered just outside Caltus Center, Center. This is against Iowa. Marvin Rainwater, a local farmer, had been digging a new well on his property and struck a deposit of very hard stone about nine feet below this topsoil. In attempting to dig, dig it out, he found that it was more than four feet wide in every direction. Removing it from the, with, would be a terrific chore. He considered the possibility of the, uh, that this was a layer of bedrock, but that would certainly be odd that close to the surface. Further, being in somewhat familiar with geologic uh, deposits, he knew that, that the stone was not a familiar limestone for which such eastern Iowa areas like Stone City are famous. This was something else entirely. For a close inspection, rainwater also saw that the stone was not as rough as might be expected in a natural formation, but was in fact smooth and polished. Now, very curious as to the nature of the find, he called several friends from surrounding farms and they began an excavation. They discovered that it was not a single stone, but rather one of at least several irregularly cut slabs stretching out over a wide area, yet fitted together that, that not even a knife blade could put between them. Uh, now, is this interesting, Joe? Mm -hmm. This is Iowa. This isn't in Egypt. This is right here. Each slab measured roughly 8 by 10, and when struck with a sledge, seemed to ring with a hollowness that might indicate that this was not a floor, but the outside portion of a ceiling. Ooh. I love the study. Hmm. Rainwater wondered if he had not stumbled upon some sort of buried, buried stone structure on this property, <laughs> believing that there might be a way to parlay living a living from, uh, other than farming if he played his cards right. Mr. Rainwater contacted George Von Podre College, who, who in turn dispatched a team of archaeologists, anthropologists, and geologists to the site. The researchers were delighted with this, no, the abnormalities, abnormalities <coughs> presented to them. Finally, or firstly, the stone was not at all native, native to Iowa, but was a, a, in fact basalt, a, 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 in fact basalt, a hard, dense volcanic rock composed of plaquecles, uh, agate, and magnetite. 
Now, that didn't get there by itself. Oh, absolutely not. Not in 10-foot slabs. That had to have happened oh, at the destruction. That'd be a hard thing to drag behind you, Bill. Huh? Anyway. The death of the slab indicated they had been there for a very long time, predating, predating the advent of the, of the kind of modern transportation and heavy machinery needed to bring such a large quantity of foreign stone to Iowa, and quite po probably the slabs had been laid down before the last glacial age. Boy, those must have had a lot of slaves. Mm. See, we try to make it down to man's level. We want to explain it we, as, as who we are. Okay? It, it is impossible to gauge with any certainty, certainty just how long they've been there. After the soil covering the slabs had been entirely moved, the area covered by the stones is a perfect square measuring 188 feet on each side. <clears throat> Digging around, now, now this thing, perfect square. Digging around the perimeter revealed that rainwater had been correct. The structure did dig deeper into the ground. The cyclopean structure was revealed to be a pyramid. Wow. Uh-oh. Similar in the shape of the one located in Marietta, Ohio. By the way, pyramids have been found all over the world, and they all line up the same star structure. And they're not. <gasps> what they're a coincidence. They're not all in Egypt. And they're all based on a way line as well. Although these all those mounds and what monuments erected by the prehistoric Indians were made of sun-dried brick mixed with rushes. There's this technique too was curiously similar to the Egyptian technique of brick making with strong mud. Now again, how did this technology get from Egypt to America? FedEx. FedEx. Oh. <laughs> I don't think about it. And of course, internet helped too, internet. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, now, uh, just ask the woman. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it similar and it's it's similar to the to the Egypt Egyptian technician in any way. It took many months, but the entire structure was finally exposed, and on the eastern side was found massive a massive field in archway with stone resemblance to those of ancient Greece. Mm. Man, what a coincidence. At the bottom of the, of, of the arch was a smaller arch measuring only six feet to the to the capstone. This too had been filled in and blocked off. With genuine awe and some hesitancy, the scientists of the rainwater site began the work of opening this smaller entryway, wondering what, what light from the first torch penetrated into the gloom of the ancient structure. Albert Rossenlocker gasped at what he thought were seven huge and exquisitely detailed statues seated in a ring around a very large and deep fire pit. Moving closer, he realized that the figures were not carved of stone, were in fact the mummified remains of some giant humanoid race. Yeah. Let's go there. I love to go there. Mm -hmm. Could what they found be, in fact, a prehistoric burial vault for some pre human creatures, or was it a prison designed to hold some freakish aberration of nature? The figures were each fully 10 feet tall, even, then, even when measured seated in their cross <coughs> position. They were 10 feet tall, measured sitting down. They all faced into the circle with arms folded across their legs. Upon close examination, it was seen that they had double rows of teeth in their upper and lower jaws. They were having a power. That's scary. I let this sink in. I'm telling you, I'm going to read you in a minute. From history, they were carnivals. Carnivals. I mean, they, not, they eat people. Yeah. Uh, the foreheads were unusually low and sloping, with exceedingly prominent brows. You ever seen a picture of the, of the aliens with them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. The skin of the mysterious giants was wrinkled and tough as though tanned, and the hair of the, each of them was distinctly red in color. The Indians talk about a, a, a giant race of uh, red-headed giants. Yeah, the Indians have mm -hmm. Indian yes. stories. Their faces, still very expressive, even in death, taunted the scientists with their silence. Who or what were these creatures, and how had they come to be locked in this stone room, and where had the stone itself came from originally? After careful excavation of the site, the bodies were removed for x-ray and autopsy examination. The excitement over the find was far in excess of the Jim, Jimson man finding Iowa so many years before, a hoax from the, which the Putnam Museum of Davenport had never fully recovered from. These giants were very real. The medical examinations demonstrated that these were definite skeletal structures, that they were organic creatures who had once been very much alive. One explanation of the, the mummies might lie in the legends of the Paiute Indians who tell of a race of red-headed giants who were still mortal enemies centuries ago. Now, this hasn't been thousands of years ago. It's been a few years ago. They were called Satikas, driven from Nevada by a previously unheard of alliance of tribes. Did the Satikas retreat from the west to Iowa? 
was a stone structure here before that simply or, and simply co-opted by the giants. No one may ever know. However, it is interesting to note that among the Indian relics held in the Colossus County chapter of the State Historical Society are three road made entirely from very long strands of red hair. We await DNA comparison sample taken from the mummies and the robes to be determined a connection. In the meantime, Marvin Rainwater has had his farm purchased by interested parties in Hopkins Grove for an undisclosed sum and is quite happily no longer tilling in the fields or digging wells. Isn't that amazing? Mm. We're talking a few hundred miles from here. Yeah. In this country. Yeah. Well, you know, think about this. Down in Georgia, there's the Georgia Guidestones, and almost no one in the United States knows about them. Yeah. And those, those are as uh, explicative, or, you know, indicative of, of the New World Order and their plans as anything on Earth, and it's, it's massive. And, it's not, and it's, no one knows who built it. No, it's not that old you know? either. No. Oh, no. It was, I mean, there are pictures of them yeah. building it. We know, we know it was built, but we don't know, don't who, know who because did it. They, they covered it up and basically gave it to the city, and the city makes a bunch of money off of it. Well, stop and think, and we're going to get more of this. I'm not going to rush through this, folks. Y'all enjoying this so far? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stop and think an eight by ten foot slab of stone. Not, it's not native to the area. You got to bring it in from somewhere, probably further west, because that's where the volcanoes and different things have been. We know of. How in the name of goodness could they get that there? Well, it wasn't even volcanic rock. Basaltic is is uh, igneous rock that. Um, most of like under the uh, Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, there's where really? the basaltic rock is. Under the continents, you have gr granite rock. Okay, but basalt is not. You see, it's it's not from a from it's a not, volcano. It's not above Earth. Well, it's above not Earth. from a volcano. No. Well, it, 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 it is, how did they do it? I just, so it's further than volcanoes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now let that sink in. That's even better. How did this? Even these giants. That's a huge, massive undertaking. You mean they carried it clear from wherever, from a, uh, an ocean, got down the water and dragged it across the continent? Yeah, that yeah. doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, they have a way of transporting it. They, they had more people. technology than even just being but giants. But that could have been right, right after the Great Flood. Yeah. I wonder if, and I wonder if it, with the flood, that it... Uh, it just, I know. It's, 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 yeah, okay. Uh, it would be at low tide. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah, okay. Being for them. <laughs> <laughs> Within an ancient burial mound near the town of Sayre in Bradford County, Pennsylvania, skeletons were measuring approximately seven feet in length were discovered in the 1800s. But the most remarkable feature, now pay attention, you'll just mention it, of these tall skeletons was not their height, but the strange horn like protrusions above the brow region on their skulls. That's right. Mm -hmm. This meant they were buried around 1200 AD. That's after Christ. Mm -hmm. According to some sources, skeletons were sent to the American Investigating Museum in Philadelphia and vanished. Of course. Now, could that be in a... I'm just asking. We're going to be in more DNA. Could that be in a crossbreed of some kind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 What if they can take that DNA? Is it possible that Satan this day is trying to do the same thing? Same thing. thing. We'll come well, later on this. Sure. In Lampic Rancho, California, 1833, soldiers discovered a skeleton 11 foot 9 inches with which was uh, covered with boulders with a, with an unidentified writing. A similar writing was unearthed on the side of Santa Maria of the coast of Los Angeles. In 1887, in Eureka, Nevada, a human leg was found measuring 38.9 inches from the knee to the heel. The man was over 11 foot tall. In Crichton, Arizona, 1891, a sarcophagus was uncovered containing a human, meter, human three meters high and had 12 toes. More recently, skeletons ranging from 2.8 meters to 3.12, that's about 9, 10 foot, right? 3 meters to 10 foot. Yeah. Were found by Soviets in the Caucas Caucasus Mountains. In China, that's where our ancestors come from, the Caucasian Mountains. Mm -hmm. I remember, they didn't ask you where you're white, black, they asked you are Caucasian or Negroid. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Serious. Right. They knew we were here. Teach, we were Caucasian. Yeah. Yeah. In China, skeletons 10 feet tall had been found. In the Philippines, a giant human skeleton was found as they uh, found that gar gargation measuring 17 feet in long. In the Eagle Three coal mine at Bear Run, Montana, 1920, T-Human molds are found three times larger than normal. In Bratton, Tennessee, human footprints are found in solid rock 33 inches long and one foot wide. These, these also had six toes each. Mm -hmm. See the trait? See the Bible said it? Did this mm -hmm. Bible say? Six, yeah. Here it is. Tool, see, this is why you need to study history yeah. and how it ties into scriptures. 
The tools found in Morocco are, are so large, their huges must have been at least 12 feet tall. Other giants found around the world were a Java giant, the South China giant, and a South, South African giant. Near Crichton in Arizona, 1881, workmen estimating for a commercial building come up with a huge stone sarcophagus eight feet long uh, below the surface. I'm sorry, eight feet below the surface. The contractor called in expert help, and the sarcophagus was opened to reveal a giant mummy case which had one, once had the body of a human being more than 12 feet tall, a human with six toes, according to the carving of this case. But the body had been buried so many thousands of years ago that it had been long since turned to dust. Just another silent witness to the truth of Genesis, which tells us there were giants on earth in those days. Excavation of, another, of over a dozen skeletons, eight, 12 feet tall, around the world shocked archaeologists. So the Bible says they were worldwide, not just here, mm -hmm. not just in, in Egypt. And a decayed skeleton, human skeleton claimed by witness, eyewitnesses to measure around uh, 10 foot 9 inches tall was unearthed by laborers again in Wheeling, West Virginia. I'm going to show you another TV book right now, page 169. That's, i got to tell you this. This is phenomenal stuff, folks. Have you ever been to the mound in Wheeling? No, I never have. I've been there any time. Oh, there was. This story here, they found this in 1950. During rook construction in home southeast Turkey, many tombs of giants were un, un, in, indeed unearthed. One femur bone, human thigh bone, was 47 foot 24 inches long. 47 inches, 47 foot 24 inches long. If, if this that were, if that were measured out, it had to be at least 16 feet tall. Now they took that bone, here it is, in the museum, actual bone in a drawing with the wrist of the leg showing, and a man standing beside it is barely thigh high. 47. Barely about his knees. 47.24 inches. 47.24. Okay, 47. Four feet long, just the bone. Now, now think about this, just the bone. It's four foot. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want you to look at, you can't see them over there really, but the picture now this man standing beside the outline of what this man was stood. That's wild. Barely comes to the thigh. He was just to the thigh. Was eight feet tall. Just to the yeah. thigh part. Think about that. Yeah. So that when the Bible says giants, it really the real world giants. But talk about an understatement. As mm. far as the, you know, people say the Bible's wild. Really? If anything, it's conservative. Yeah. yeah, there are there are a lot of atheists who are uh, historians who admit that the Bible was the best, the greatest history book ever written, and yet they're actually atheists. They don't believe in God, but mm -hmm. just taking it on a purely uh, secular mm -hmm. level, they see it as they see it as the greatest history book ever written. Yeah, it is. You know, so and they found they have found actually discovered ancient civilization because the Bible because was the Bible, there. Right. Okay. Any comments so far? In Joy Mary? Interesting. It's awesome. It, it's, it's absolutely. Now, we're going to get I mean, a little bit on in the, in the pyramids, what's there. And I, again, this, you need to get some references that, that, that are good sources. And this book does tell you where to go to find all the information and study out what's going on because, again, the Bible is absolutely fact. But it's, it's so understated. It's like mm -hmm. two t plus two is four. Well, why is it that way? You know, if you want to know, you got to dig deeper and just say, hold four fingers. There's a reason for that. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, at the Checkmate seminar, we had uh, all the guy from uh, over near Parkersburg. What's yeah, yeah, uh, Eric. Uh, Eric. Uh, Dr. Benson. Benson. Eric Benson, yeah. yeah, and he showed us a lot of these uh, these sites um, of of megalithic stone and stuff. So did L. A. Marzulli. But mm -hmm. the sad part is, many of these sites now have been uh, decimated, destroyed. I mean, they'll take a whole a whole. Um, area of maybe a half an acre that's that's you know uh basically a a work of art and they'll totally destroy they'll, they'll put a parking lot there <laughs> just because they have to destroy all these things because yeah once uh you know the underpinning is knocked away from their uh you know their deceit the whole house of cards falls mm -hmm. so they have to so these, these they're people, driven these people are destroying True archaeology, mm -hmm. sure. just to so they can propagate the evolution. Yeah, they have to be able to, to cover up their their, their lies. Mm -hmm. I like to talk to Bill Deagle again, see if he found out anything else. Yeah, I'm, I like to do this sometimes too. Bill's like everybody else, he's standing up his eyeballs and getting things done. But I'm going to share some more things about the book a little bit later on. I think you'll find very interesting. But let's just look a little bit now, just a little bit, on some things that the pyramids. Now, I don't know if you ever looked at the pyramids or not. 
I already had them before in any detail. But since starting into this, I'm beginning to realize this these, this was not built by slave labor. Let's yeah. take a filter. I'd love to. <laughs> take a filter, yeah. This was not built by slaves, not human mm-hmm. slaves anyway. They couldn't do it. And the, the, te- the technology and the, arch- and, and the engineering that, to do this was not mm-hmm. brought on by man's uh, genius. Mm-hmm. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, they still can't do it today. Right. Yeah, no, I've heard that. They cannot duplicate it. Yeah, now, how could that be if something thousands of years ago yeah. kept done coming to pay It's like the Valley of the Kings that says some of the uh, uh, burial sites you know, go on a long ways and they're all perfect, laid off perfect, at perfect levels and all. Mm-hmm. The Smithsonian tried. They took a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they have it right in the middle of St. Peter's Square, a uh, monolith. It's, what do you, what do you call this? Uh, you know, the Washington Monument. <laughs> oh, the the, uh, the uh, yeah, phallic, it's phallic symbol. It's a phallic symbol, but there, there's another word for it. But anyway, they took a small one, and they came up with all kinds of ideas of how they lifted these things up and set them. And, and they tried, and they could not do it. With as many men and pulleys and ropes, it, they couldn't stand one of these things up using human power. It wasn't, wasn't possible. And they thought it was, you know, on paper. Yeah. They'll tell you all kinds of things. But show me. Yeah, do it. I'm going to read to you some history of, of the names of giants and what they brought to Earth. Now, these were actually beings that brought technology and science to the Earth that was, was not possible for them to discover on their own. And still isn't. We only got five minutes left. My goodness. I'm going to read to you. And I, I, don't, I wish I had time to throw all these details, folks. I just don't. But we're going to discuss a little bit heavenly beings and human technology. By the way, did, did you know that angels uh, actually have their own writing code? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that either. But anyway, this is Enoch chapter, chapter 8. And Azazel taught men to make swords <coughs> and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to him the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of a- a- antimony. What's antimony? Uh, it's uh, I, I never, it's what, what makes lead and hard. Lead hard, really? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an element. Okay. It's a, it's a, and it taught, it taught the beautifying of eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much, god, much godlessness and they com- committed fornication. And they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Remember, did I try to do Ronnie by the worshiping gods they didn't know before? Mm-hmm. Simjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Uh, Amaro's the resolving of enchantments. Bargachel taught astrology. Kobach Bell, the, uh, the constellations. Ezek, Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Ariel, the signs of the earth. Shemesh, the signs of the sun. And Shere, the course of the moon. Now, why would these angels teach the people about heavenly bodies? What were they bringing on? Astrology, worship of the planets. Sun worshippers, God worshippers, moon worshippers, as you say. Yes. Now, it, it, now that's not serious, because these angels wanted to worship themselves. That's what Satan is ours all the time. What do you think about Mary? This is this is wild. It is wild. Now, now listen to this, guys. I wish I had time to do all this. In 6500 BC, one of the strangest stories of all the ancient stories about technology because of its mention, 6500 B.C. Talked about nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. I'll read to you. This is right out of the history of this, right out of the book that was written 6500 years ago. A single projectile charged with all the power of the universe, an incandescent column of smoke and flame as bright as a thousand suns rose in all its splendor. A perpendicular explosion with, with its billowing smoke clouds, a cloud, the cloud of smoke rising after its first explosion formed into expanding round circles like the opening of a giant pair of sails. You let this sink in? Mm-hmm. It was an unknown weapon, an armed thunderbolt. It said it can describe it like we understand it. A gigantic messenger of death, which in, reduced to ashes the entire race of the, of the Vicians and the Ana- Anakas. The corpses were so burned as to be unrecognizable. The hair and nails fell out, pottery broke without, without apparent cause, and the birds turned white. After a few hours, all foodstuffs were infected. To escape this, this from this fire, the soldiers threw themselves in streams to wash themselves and their equipment. 
It says 6,500 years ago. Yeah. How can that be? Well, they, they found um, deposits in the ground that had all the uh, radioisotopes that you have when you set off a nuclear, you know, an atomic bomb, okay? And they postulated, not knowing that, you know, these things could have actually been man-made or made by some intelligence, okay? They postulated that somehow there had been an accumulation of fissionable materials of such quantity that you get what's called uh, critical mass and, and this thing basically um, you know went into fission but then a lot of scientists are like what you know I mean this How is this be? yeah you're, you're taking what would be definitely a, a post nuclear event and, and trying to pos you know trying to twist it so that it's a natural thing and, and that was uh, you know that was in India Pakistan that area back about uh, oh Ten years ago, at least, that they found that. I mean, I'll find this intriguing. Very. Yeah. I'm honest, folks. I do study. I love to study. Please understand that I do spend hours doing this. I'm not bragging on me. It's about like doing it. It's not a chore to me. You understand? Yeah. I do. I do it back at some time and regroup. Like I said, go back and do it again. But it's beyond our intelligence as far yeah. as what we did did past centuries. Yeah, and who needs Stephen King or Godzilla? Yeah, for real. <laughs> now, yeah. Now I'm going to show you a hieroglyphic, hieroglyph, hieroglyphic of, of Egypt. I'm, I'm, this is, we're about out of time. I'm going to do this to wet your appetite for next time so you can come back to us next time. I'm going to show you some pictures. Now I want you to tell me what they are. Okay, this is actually a hieroglyphic of, of Egypt. I'm going to cover with two of them. And someone tell me in that circle place right there, what do you see? An airplane. Be more specific. That looks Look like at a submarine. No, right there. The, the, the circle. Oh, right there. Right there in the circle. Yeah, what is that? What's it look like to you? You said it. It looks like a helicopter. It's a helicopter. Oh, okay. You see that? That's a helicopter. In Egypt, ancient hieroglyphics. But I don't see any people. No, no. <laughs> but how did they know what a helicopter looked like? Not only that, now you see. What she just said a minute ago. Now, submarine. Mm -hmm. The bottom yeah. of a submarine. Yeah. How? One more thing. What do you see there? Airplane? Ah, uh, <coughs> I would say airplane. Airplane. The tail of it. See, yeah, you, see you can see the fuselage, fuselage, fuselage. And, yep. the, and the tail yep. of an airplane. Yep. Spatial. How do you do that 4,000 years ago? So the same That's technology the was in the days of Noah. <coughs> exactly. We are seeing the same technology today. You will see. I believe this all in my heart. You're going to see crossbreed crossbreeds of animals and humans walking this earth. It's called Plum Island. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to see this. <laughs> now, Nick, this is phenomenal stuff. How did they know to put pictures of helicopters, submarines, and planes in the hieroglyphics? Well, that just proved that everything Bill Diggle told us. Is real. It's true. Yeah. And 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 Ecclesiastes said nothing is new that happened mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, but see, the Bible said that we all thought, hmm, okay, we didn't want to bend. Yeah, we do. Hmm. And this is only beginning, folks. Believe me, it gets much gooder. Well, there's some okay. Laws you can go in and see it stuff, man. I mean, I for one find this fascinating. And and I for one, I love to know the Bible. Is yeah. so accurate, yet so understated as to be conservative. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the ultimate would be if you could go back in time and meet Jesus. But other than that, you study it. Exactly. You, that's as close as we can get. You know, it's like you know, it's like you see in the ocean. If you see it all at one time, say, "Boy, that's a, that's a big hole of water." Yeah, <laughs> it is. But that's an understatement, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll never forget seeing it the first time. All inspiring unit. It is. I remember when the, when the boys saw it the first time taking down to Virginia Beach, they climbed up a little dune and, <laughs> yeah. you know, they just melted. You know? we went to I tried to tell them it's going to be big, but, you know, how do you describe big of an ocean? Yeah. You know? When we went to Newport, Oregon, it was the first time I had actually seen the ocean. And I was the same way. Pretty My eyes were just, Earth wow, that's a wow. lot of water. Yeah, it is, to say the least. Houses that, they say we, we are in the third. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So what was here in the first two? Right, right. Well, it says replenish. Yeah. Man was was to replenish the earth.
Now, we're, we're going to close we'll this time, folks. Yeah. We're going to close this time and hope to see you in a couple of weeks. I hope you understand why I'm trying to do this because all this is telling, we're telling, has told us the past and tells the future for us now. And, and we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> see you next time. A holy cloud of witnesses surrounds us as we walk. Saints and martyrs through the ages who have marched this way before. And they cry, oh church, take courage, it's your time to take a stand. Time to march with hearts courageous through the land. We're marching on with hearts courageous. We'll follow everywhere you want us to. And should you lead us where the battle rages, let us march with hearts courageous after you.